a ruined city, a hungry little girl, a magical grimoire tempting her protector with a dark power, a world that has ended, and a painful story of heartache to follow. But to establish how we got here, in this oppressive world that stretches on past the last vestiges of humanity and into the age of sentient machinery, we first need to go backwards thousands of years, from Yona to Furiai, from Earth to Midgard, from Nier to Dragonguard. Dragonguard is a dark fantasy game directed by eccentric game developer Yoko Taro. Set in the world of Midgard, the protagonist Kaim wages a violent war against the Sinister Empire due to their hand in the murder of his parents. During his bloody conquest, Kaim is nearly killed, and forges a pact with a human-hating red dragon so that they both might live, and more importantly fight, another day. Much of the game's content and characters center around the corruption of tried and tested tropes inherent to the RPG genre. The valiant hero in Kaim, his trusted sidekick in Inuart, the wise sage in Verdale, and many more throughout. Ultimately, each of these tropes are addressed with extreme skepticism and derision. For example, Kaim is instead a bloodthirsty murderer. Inuart is both jealous and conniving, and Verdele is a hypocritical moralizer who benefits from Kaim's trail of destruction, all the while denouncing it. That's of course to say nothing of the supposed goddess Furiae, and her unnatural attachment to her brother Kaim being a deliberate refutation to the idea of the perfect heroine, who Yoko Taro considers forgettable and boring. And, as an unambiguous admonishment of the ideal younger sister trope regularly seen in anime and video games, the constant challenging of these well-established cliches was, in part, to allow Drakengard to stand out in a sea of Final Fantasy and Dragon Quest games, but also to provide an alternate perspective of what happens to characters in role-playing games that want to kill with impunity and still expect to see a happy ending. To Yoko Taro, it seems, having characters suffer hardships that they can simply easily overcome is superficial compared to the kinds of hardships in the real world. And as such, everything from Kaim's cruelty to Furiai's purposefully shallow characterization is, in a sense, punished in severe and unconquerable ways. This punishment, of course, comes most cataclysmically in the form of the game's five endings, A through E, each of which end in tragedy for some or all of the main characters. Ending A sees Kaim being punished for his violent conquest, losing his newly found relationship with the dragon in order to repair the broken seals. Kaim has now lost more than he started with. Ending B sees Inuart's despair and selfishness cause him to foolishly try to resurrect Furiae. With her resurrection, she transforms into a horrible creature, and the former goddess heralds the end of the world with an infinite number of clones. In Ending C, the pact between Kaim and the dragon is broken, as all the dragons rise up against humanity. Kaim is ultimately forced to slay his former partner, and runs headlong into yet another battle he has absolutely no hope of winning. In Ending D, Mana succeeds in summoning the Watchers to Midgard, prompting the end of the world. Kaim and the dragon help Sarah seal the monsters away, only to be viciously killed in the process. A new day dawns, with the crystallized remains of the timeless boy keeping the grotesqueries at bay. And then there's Ending E where during the fight with the Queen Beast, Kaim, the dragon, and the creature are abruptly teleported from Midgard to Earth, plopped in the middle of Shinjuku, Tokyo. After a grueling rhythm-based duel, the Queen Beast is defeated, and before they can even celebrate their victory, Kaim and the dragon are shot down and killed by the Japanese Air Self-Defense Force. A gruesome and abrupt end for the saviors of Midgard. If you read anything about Ending E, the end of Dragon's Fear, it won't take you long to see someone say, either on Wikipedia or Drakengard's own wiki, that it was intended as a joke in the same vein as the joke endings found in the Silent Hill games, designed to both amuse the player after a harrowing experience, and to reward their dedication to playing the game. In an interview with the now-defunct CoreGamers.info, archived by GameAnim.com, when asked what the origin of these endings were, CGI director of Silent Hill 2, Takayoshi Sato, described them as a tradition which was supposed to break the serious mood at the end, and that they were specifically designed as a joke. This has been corroborated by Silent Hill 2's art director, Masahiro Ito, on Twitter, who simply said, Just joke, lol. 
Given what Yoko Taro was attempting to accomplish with Drakengard and the kind of commentary that forms its very identity, it's highly unlikely he wanted the player to receive any levity whatsoever after the four horrendous endings they had already seen. In particular, it was important to him that the players not see things like Kaim's cruelty and reckless treatment for life be rewarded. The only source on the claim that Ending E was supposed to mirror these Silent Hill endings is a roundtable interview conducted with Dengeki Online, where Yoko Taro discussed the history of the Drakengard franchise just before the release of Drakengard 3. When discussing Ending E, he described it as a pakuri, a slang term for theft, fraud, or plagiarism, of End of Evangelion, and expressed regret that it didn't come across clearly. But in that interview, he never suggested this ending was a joke, or otherwise not meant to be taken as seriously as the rest of the game. In fact, in a 2017 interview with Game Informer, Yoko Taro suggested that each of the multiple endings in his games are legitimate ways of playing, describing how each ending adds a new layer to the player's understanding of the narrative, and how happy he is that the player can choose to stop at any time, even beyond the endings he himself had written. In fairness, the assumption that ending E was a joke at least makes sense within the context of Drakengard's initial release, since it was such a bizarre and unexpected ending to an otherwise consistent game world. But in a time where we have Nier, Drakengard 3, and Nier Automata to form a bit of a profile with how Yoko Taro makes his games, to perpetuate the idea that he was emulating Silent Hill strikes me as a little simplistic. And worse still, to describe ending E as a joke ending reduces the pointed and purposeful commentary that Drakengard is full of to an arbitrary and haphazard mishmash of a crazy auteur's whimsy, when there is plenty of evidence to suggest it is anything but. It is a deliberate and unrelenting refutation to the status quo of role-playing games, and its entire narrative holds a mirror up to the morality of the self-righteous hero and his multifaceted retinue. First and foremost, my motivation behind researching and writing this video was simply to correct the record about a franchise I have a great interest in, even if any inaccuracies weren't particularly nefarious and to ensure that people entering this game world have a holistic understanding of how it's constructed. And on a somewhat contradictory note, Nier, despite its incredibly tragic and crushing storyline, is something of a joke in itself, albeit a bitter one. The world is so impossibly doomed before your quest even begins as a post-post-apocalypse. The main antagonist's name, when directly translated from Japanese, is the Demon Lord, which is an RPG trope as old as time and any semblance of joy in that world is snuffed out so cruelly that it's actually farcical. There's a similar degree of cosmic irony in the existential struggle present in Nier Automata as well. But on some level, I definitely can't deny that the idea of Nier's inception being the result of a joke ending kind of bothers me, since I feel that branding not only undermines Drakengard to some degree, but also Nier's status as a fully formed game that can stand on its own and deliver an incredible story. Barring an official and specific statement from Yoko Taro as to whether his 18-year-old video game's final ending is definitively a joke or not, it will always remain up in the air what exactly his intentions were with ending E. And if his original concept of Kaim fighting a giant version of Japanese pop idol Ayumi Hamasaki was approved, there wouldn't be much of a conversation to be had at all. But with the current version of ending E being what it is, and the breadth of work Yoko Taro has released since to contextualize it, Relegating this bizarre conclusion of Drakengard's story to a simple joke just doesn't sit well with me for a variety of reasons. End of Dragon Sphere is chilling, devastating, and unnerving. And even in saving Midgard like true heroes, Kaim and the dragon's actions only end up dooming the new world they found themselves in for thousands of years to come. The joke here, if indeed there is one, seems only to be that no good deed goes unpunished.